Hi friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. This week we're gonna be taking some common household items and add some nature to turn them into beautiful fall decor. Real quick, I wanted to share this beautiful site with you. Right next to the playground at the beach, there's a few of these beautiful flowering bushes and they were all loaded with monarch butterflies. It's just an incredible sight. For our first upcycle project today, I picked up this wooden cup at a yard sale and I love the etching around the middle. It has some discoloration, but we're gonna fix that right up with two coats of the Folk Art multi-surface paint. I decided on this piece to do a very heavy distress using some fine grit sandpaper. I don't show it in the video. I'm not sure what happened to the clip, but I do apply some of the antique wax I had a piece of styrofoam left over from a project last week, so I cut that to size, tucked it down inside, and deciding what I'm gonna place inside of it. On the left is a bleach pine cone, and on the right-hand side is a regular one. I These Eastern white pine cones really don't take the bleach very well, but one thing I do love about them is that the sap will turn white. So I decided to use one of those for this project. I dug a hole down inside of the styrofoam and I added E6000 and a lot of hot glue, tucked the pine cone down inside, twisted some Spanish moss and hot glued that to around the top and wrapped some jute twine and made a simple bow. This was such a quick, easy and budget friendly project to do and it's a simple piece to add into your decor for fall and winter. I think this project would also be beautiful just tucking down some dried florals or even some eucalyptus. And here is a simple set that I did in a tarnished creamer and sugar container. And I added some green reindeer moss to the top and tucked a pine cone inside. And these can be easily changed out because I didn't even add any styrofoam inside. Another simple way to add nature into your decor for the colder months is to add some things that you might find outside and put them in a little bowl or dish. And I think Adding them to a candlestick holder or any type of pedestal just gives it a special look. Someone gave me this teacup and saucer. They thought I could use it and it has already been glued together. And so I put some different types of pine cones in there and an acorn and some shredded book pages, which we are going to get to shortly. So I know I mentioned in my last video, I'd be adding a few items to my Etsy store. I was able in one day to add over 50 items. Thank you to those of you who have made purchases last week. I will be adding more this week as well. I created a multi-item coupon just for you. That's good to the end of this year. For this project, you can grab book pages, sheet music, magazine pages, newspaper, or you can print out some pages that you find online. I used a wide mouth canning jar screw band, but you could use a regular one as well. I'm cutting the pages in half. I believe that they're probably around four inches by maybe three. That was only because that was my book cut in half, but you could easily make them into a square as well. Here I'm counting out the pages because I wanted to know exactly how many I used. You're going to be gluing on two rows, one on the inside and one along the outside. I used 18 of them around on the inside and 14 around the outside. You take one piece, wrap it around the end of a pencil or a pen. This is gonna help crunch up your book page as well as help so that you don't burn your finger. I'm applying glue on the bottom of that band and along the side. because so I wanna make sure that they're really glued into place and don't come apart. You can crunch those book pages up as much as you want to. The more that you crunch them, wrap them, smash them, the fuller that your wreath is gonna be. So on the long and the inside, I'm going and leaving about a quarter of an inch space in between each one. If you glue them one on top of the other and do it any closer, it's too full. It's not like a fluffy kind of full. They're, they become, it becomes way too tight and it just doesn't fluff up. Next step is to glue some of the book pages on the side. 
And you're gonna space these a little bit further apart than what you did on the inside, but don't worry, because we're gonna glue them, the pages together. And that way it will look nice and full. So I used less on the outside than I did on the inside. Did a quarter inch space on the inside row, about a half inch space on the outside. I find with book pages when you're working with them, the more you crumple them, the fuller they're gonna be. So along the outside edge, they were spaced a half of an inch apart. So what I'm doing now is any place where there's a spot, I'm adding some hot glue, gluing them together. And then I will make sure that they are all glued flush around the backside of the metal band. And the next step was to go around and fluff out all the pages, crumple them, make sure that they looked even. And you could even cut some pages back in case a few were too long. Next, I took some hot glue and added some burlap ribbon along the back side of the metal band. I cut a piece of twine about eight to 10 inches and put it in a loop, gluing that directly to the metal band. And then I'll go up over the top of that with a ribbon so it has a nice finished look. So each one takes about 15 to 20 minutes to put together. I'd love to hear from you guys and let me know what type of embellishments would you add. Also, be sure to let me know what item or project was your favorite in this video. I always look forward to reading your comments and responding back. Mine for this video was this one and one I'll show you shortly. So for the next book page project, I ran some pages through the shredder. I have a little leftover coffee and I'm placing the shreds in the coffee. Now the coffee was not very dark, which is why I ended up in the bowl and not in my cup. <laughs> So you could definitely make it a lot darker. And then I gently squeezed them out, laid them on the trays in my dehydrator, ran it through for 30 minutes at 120 degrees. I did put them one on top, the trays one on top of one another because I didn't want them blowing up into the fan. Those I did crumpled that first tray there. And then the others in the back, I laid completely flat. I will have bags of both the coffee stain and the regular available over on my Etsy store, probably sometime midweek. I think these would be great for scrapbooking and junk journals. Just to give you some idea, you can put them in an antique canning jar. These jars will also be available over on my Etsy store, but you can put a faux candle in there, wrap some ribbon or lace around the bell. We added a faux apple back there, and then it makes a great bird's nest. And the plain page shreds in with the pine cone kind of remind me of snow. I'll we'll have to try that this year with our bottle brush jars. Okay, and probably one of the most common items to find are, are, or have on hand are photo frames. So this was a really super slick oval frame. I wanted to give it some texture. So I'm applying paint from DIY and that's cake batter. I applied two coats and then I took some of the Waverly antique wax. And I did two applications of this wax. I added it on with a mini chip brush because I wanted it to have a lot of texture. So then I wiped that back and then applied another coat of the wax and wiped that back. So this picture here was the inspiration for this project. This antique print in this antique wooden frame, I purchased it at a thrift store and I love the age look of the print. It looks like it was printed on a brown paper bag. So for this project, I cut out a piece of brown paper bag, created an image over on Canva. If you'd like to see how I did this in a previous video using images from Graphics Ferry, I'll post that at the end of this video for you. And then I just traced around the glass to the frame and cut along the edge. I should have ironed the brown paper bag before I printed on it. So next time I will definitely do that first. And let me know if you've tried printing out on a brown paper bag yet. Another common thrifted item are coasters. I don't think I've ever gone to a thrift store and not found some. I picked up these vinyl 
coasters that kind of have a leather look to them. I'm going to use the IOD pinecone stamps. That's my favorite set that I have. And just applying the ink onto the stamp. And after the ink has a chance to dry, it is permanent ink. Now, I don't think for vinyl coasters you'd put anything hot on them, but I thought they'd even look nice in a display. Super quick two-minute project, and you could use any stamp that you choose. For this next project, I used a set of thrifted coasters, my IOD ink pad, which is permanent, and some leaves from outside. Now, the leaves have probably been inside for about a day. You don't want them crunchy where they're going to crumble. You definitely want to be them to be pliable. We're going to take off this paper covering that is on this coaster. Looks like it's just a tile, so you could probably grab some of these from your hardware store. And then it has a cork already glued on the back. So you could definitely make these by hand. I'm going to go in and clean some of the residue off, and then we're going to get started with this project. So now on the back side of the leaf, you want the part where the veins are sticking out the most. And take my ink pad, and I did go over it with some ink. So hopefully it'll be nice and dark. And you want to keep pressing till each section has ink on it and a little bit down on your stem. And before you do this step, you're going to kind of want an idea of where you want to place your leaf on the tile. This next step is very similar to how we do the freezer paper transfers. You're going to hold on very firmly to the center with one hand and not let go. And you're going to move in an outward motion. I usually do the stem last because you can see how when you're moving it, the stem bounces up and down and I don't want it to move position. I believe it was in the spring that we did the freezer paper transfers onto the coasters. So at the end of this video, I'll be sure to post that video for you as well. You can peek to see where the ink stamped on. You still need to press a little bit more. And remember, it's just like the freezer paper transfers. If you push hard, you're going to get the ink to kind of pool up on top like I just did there. Ta-da! That is so cool. So now that I have all four coasters done, I want to take some white wax to this cute little wicker basket because they fit inside of here perfectly. I used white wax from DIY. And I applied it using the brush that I have designated just for my white wax. And then I wiped it back using a cotton cloth. So it took about 24 hours for the ink to dry. When you first stamp them, if you make a mistake, you can wipe it off, especially on a smooth surface like this. Uh, this was a very fun project and what a great way to update some thrifted coasters. What do you guys think of this project? I think one of the most common items that I see when I go to thrift stores are glass jars. And I am in love with these antique glass atlas jars. And they're so simple to decorate, especially for fall. To add a pop of color, I just put some dried beans in the bottom of these containers. And I believe in here we have some rice. And just added a faux candle. And as long as the jars have been sterilized, they're fine to store your dry goods in. And I think that they look beautiful. You can even use popcorn, popcorn, or even some acorns or mini pine cones. Here, I just added a candle and a glass jar. I do recommend using the faux candles, especially for anything dried like the acorns or pine cones. I just used a real candle just for the video. Or you can add a vintage spoon. And I like how this one has orange for a pop of fall color. So last week over on my Canva design channel, which is linked below, we put together a few elements so that we could print out our own decoupage paper right on tissue paper. All you do is tape your tissue paper onto a piece of cardstock and run it through your printer. You can also use spray adhesive, and this comes in handy if you need the full print to be an eight and a half by 11. That way you don't have to cut off the tape edges. This is just a 
glass jar that I got from the thrift store. I'm applying Mod Podge onto it. You can rip your paper into like little sections and apply it one on top of the other. But this I wanted to make quick and simple. I did not smooth it out all the way because I wanted it to have some bumps and some texture because I go over it afterwards with some white wax and apply that on to show some of the detail. Now I'm taking my finger, going around the top edge, ripping off the tissue paper. So that way I get a nice clean line up at the top. And then I'll apply Mod Podge up over the top of that to make sure that it's all tacked down properly. And then I took a cloth and just lightly wiped back some of that white wax. Then I took a piece of twine, wrapped it around and tied it in a knot. And then I pulled out a box of vintage buttons that my mom gave to me. They had a bunch of different shapes and I found a light green apple and hot glued that up at the top. It's hard to tell in the video because it was daytime and all the sun was shining through my windows, but it's really neat in the evening. The candle, whether you use a real one or a foam one, it looks like stained glass. And I think that this would be a really fun project for kids to do as well. And then those two videos that I promised that I would link, if you click on the one on the left-hand side, it's gonna take you to the freezer paper transfer coasters and other projects. If you click on the right-hand thumbnail, it's gonna take you over to the brown paper bag picture frame project. Friends, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Have a super blessed week and I will see you next Sunday.